Let's take a look at the big derby prep down at Oaklawn Park from Saturday afternoon. This was the field for the Grade 2 Rebel. $900,000 was the purse. Field of 10 three-year-olds going a mile and a 16th on the only surface down at Oaklawn Park, the dirt track. Solomini making his three-year-old debut for Bob Baffert. Zayat Stable shipping in from the West Coast. Todd Pletcher sort of throwing Magnum Moon out there to find out if he can cut the mustard against better horses in graded stakes company. And then you had many of the local hopes. You had combatant, you had title ready, you had sporting chance. Really, this turned into, I don't want to say a one-horse show, but one horse clearly superior to everyone else on Saturday afternoon. Vic Stauffer with the stretch run. Lots of chances, top of the stretch. Magnum Moon has taken over the lead. He's two lengths in front from title ready. Combatant splits horses. Solomini's got to go from there to the outside end. Higher power and Magnum Moon comes to the 16th pole. And now he's three in front. Combatant and Solomini chase him to the wire. It is Magnum Moon undefeated and a rebel winner. Magnum Moon. Magnum Moon passes his first graded stakes test with flying colors. Gets the job done in the grade two. Rebel pays $8 to win. The number three, Solomini, the even money favorite, runs second, $2.80 to place. The number uh, the number 10, excuse me, combatant, runs third, $3.20 to show. The $1 exacta comes back $11. Even the 50 cent trifecta, 4 3 10, comes back $26.25. And the 10 cent superfecta comes back $20.99. Magna Moon, a three-year-old. He is a perfect three of three lifetime. Over $577,000 in career earnings. Owned by Luana L. and Robert E. Lowe. Trained by Todd Pletcher. Bred by Ramona S. Bass, LLC. In Kentucky, ridden to victory by Luis Saez. And the pedigree at the bottom of the page. You can see he's by Malibu Moon. Out of an unbridled song mare named Dazzling Song. So far, this horse looks really, really strong and really, really promising, in my opinion. He earns a 97 buyer speed figure, a 121 time form U.S. rating. When you look at the incremental fractions, he came home in 31 and 1, where you look at a horse like Solomini, who came home in 31 and 3, and you see Combatant, he also came home in 31 and 1, but it was just the way that the two of them were doing it. Magnum Moon, so far, when you go back to that second lifetime start of his at Tampa Bay Downs, Never got out of first gear. And until you actually ask them to run and they have to respond and they get into a fight, you never know if they're truly going to excel or improve because sometimes they're giving you everything they've got and there isn't more in the tank when you ask for more. They're just that brilliant. With a horse like Magna Moon, you didn't know what you were going to get. You figured, it, based on what he had looked like, he looked like he was a tremendous talent. But until they ship, until they face better horses, until they do X, Y, and Z, you never really know. So when Luis Saez gets into this horse and he absolutely starts extending, I, he got a little drifty down the lane, but I think that was just, again, being a little bit immature. I love the way that he galloped out. I love the way that he finished. He looks like he's a nice, strong, good-sized horse. I have no knock against this horse right now. I don't care that he didn't race as a two-year-old. That is a whole thing that's going to come to an end sooner or later. If it takes another 100 years or it ends this year, it's going to end. A two-year-old, a horse without two-year-old experience is going to win the Kentucky Derby, period. It's just going to happen, especially with the way, and everyone has talked about it on Twitter, with the way that things are continuing to go with you know the the point system as opposed to the graded stakes earnings the fact that we just don't race the horses nearly as often or as frequently as they did 25 30 40 50 100 years ago it's going to happen at some point a horse that didn't run as a 2 year old will win the run for the roses is it magnum moon i don't know it's probably too early to tell uh, i thought a very very interesting quote from todd pletcher I think it's about how the horse comes back, how he trains, and handles the ship back and forth. This is all quoted. I think the most likely scenario would be to come back for the Arkansas Derby. That would be most likely if we decide we want to run before, now, and the Derby. We'll see how things unfold and we'll let him guide us. To me, that is saying, yeah, we'll, we'll probably come back for the Arkansas Derby, but there's a chance that we'll train him up to the Kentucky Derby. Now, there's a difference to me between not running as a two-year-old and, you know, overcoming the curse of Apollo and all that other nonsense and just strictly having a horse that's so light on foundation. The whole being light on foundation thing, you can make the same kind of case that you will for Justify if everything goes as planned and some of these other lightly raced horses. I guess the difference to me is justify if everything goes as planned 
will have three to four weeks between his final prep and the Kentucky Derby, or his only prep in the Kentucky Derby. If this horse, Magna Moon, doesn't run again until the Kentucky Derby, you're looking at, what, seven weeks? Eight weeks? Nine weeks? Something crazy like that? I don't know. I mean, it's there's a lot of time between now and the first Saturday in May, and if he doesn't run again, then instead of a horse that I'm I'm very, very interested in, He'll still be a horse I'd be interested in, but I'd be looking at it saying, wow, we got a lot of things being thrown at this horse. Another ship, 10 furlongs, horses with recency over him. I, it'll be fascinating to see. I would love to see them run him again in the Arkansas Derby. I love what I saw on Saturday. I think he's a serious stone-cold runner. I'm terrified of the idea of him not running again until the Kentucky Derby. He's got his points, though. He's already got a spot. Let's talk quickly about the runner-up Solomini for Bob Baffert. This was a horse that, all things considered, thought it was an okay effort. I do wonder a little bit. He took up a beautiful stalking position down the backside, and on the far turn, he got a little bit outrun. He got shuffled back probably three, four lengths out of it. Flavian Pratt had to get into him. He quickly came right back into it, and they tried to squeeze up the rail, turn him for home. That wasn't going to work out. Flavian angled him out. He never changed leads, and it never really looked like he was going to get there. Now, you can spin this one of two ways, or maybe even more ways. One, you can look at it and say he he hasn't improved from two to three because he earned a 92 buyer, and he was basically earning 91 and 92s as a two-year-old, and that was, that's been months since we last seen him. His last run was back in early December at Los Alamitos. You can flip it the other way and say this is a horse that hadn't run since the beginning of December, was a short horse, needed a race, is going to move forward in his second start off the bench, wherever it is. We'll touch on that in a minute. And then he's going to be primed and ready to go for the Kentucky Derby. I'm starting to wonder if he's going to get over that hump because the lead change was a problem with him as a two-year-old and just completely not doing it at all here. That's not a typical Bob Baffert sort of thing. Baffert's horses are usually very, very professional. So this, to me, yeah, it's a little bit of a concern. Perhaps there's distance problems. Um, I don't know that I want to go that far because it's not like he was sort of slowing down down the lane. It's just that the winner was pulling away from him. I thought he ran fine. I just He's going to need to take a significant step forward in that next prep for me to look at him and seriously view him as a possible derby contender or as a derby winner. Uh, that next race, where that is, We'll find out. Uh, it sounds like it could be the Santa Anita Derby, but it also sounds like it could be the Wood Memorial and even a possibility of the Bluegrass. But I guess right now, you probably don't want to run against McKinsey. You probably don't want to run against Justify if he goes to the Arkansas Derby. The Wood, Baffert has shipped in New York in the past successfully. We know that very well documented. I would imagine... I would imagine the wood is probably going to be that final prep for Solomini, and we'll find out. Getting out to nine furlongs, second off the long layoff... He should step forward. He's going to have to if we're going to look at him seriously as a Kentucky Derby contender. The rest of the field, I think they are nice horses, combatant. I still wonder, maybe he's ultimately going to be better going a little bit shorter. Maybe he's a Pat Day Mile type. Title ready is a horse. Just throw him into a stable mail. I still think they've thrown a lot at him in a short amount of time. He has a little bit of ability, though. I wouldn't be surprised down the road he turns into a nice horse. But the star of the Rebel at Oaklawn on Saturday afternoon. No question about it. it was Todd Pletcher's Magnum Moon. Luis Saez with the ride. Very, very impressive in his first start against Graded Stakes Company. He earns a 97 buyer and a 121 time form U.S. rating.